Well, coach, in the wake of the loss to Memphis, what what is the pulse of your players? Are they angry, determined? What you know? How would you describe their reaction in coming out here today? Did they look like uh, have some resolve in them? You know, I've been asked that a lot. You know, what do we do? And how do we get ready for these guys? And I guess I'm not smart enough. You know, I was just telling them it's not like we have to go to the Himalayas <laughs> and drink, you know, water coming out of mountains or something like that, or go find somebody in India there. You know, what I mean, it's just. We just got to go back to work. Right. There's nothing secretive about it. We lost. It's just like when you win. You look at what you did, and you come back and work. When you lose, you look what you did, you come back and work. That's all I know what to do. So there's no secret formula. There's no magic potion. Uh, the formula, if anything, is just keep grinding and just go back to work. That being said, clearly the players know that this is going to have, they're going to take one of their best efforts of the year to beat this team. It's been very good all season. I mean, I'm still amazed that we were even in the game last week. Right. With five turnovers. Did not normally does not normally happen. No, normally you get five turnovers, you get blown out. You know what I mean? And with the rough in the kicker, so really we had six turnovers last week. And um, if that happens again, we're definitely gonna get blown out by this team because this is a team that got after Memphis. You know what I mean? So, and you watch tape. Uh, when you watch tape with these guys, they'll get your attention really quickly. Right. right. They're so good. Wags in all Both phases. All phases. They're big. They're fast. They're well coached. I'm just impressed of how quickly, you know, and, and, and having coached for a while, how quickly they've adapted and bought into, you know, Scott's uh, philosophy, his culture, and what he's trying to implement there. That's not always the case. Sometimes kids buy in. Sometimes they don't. Right. And they're operating all cylinders. I mean, uh, they look so smooth on offense. Um, McKenzie Milton is his, you know, we try to recruit him, Yes. but he's way better than I thought. I mean, yeah. he's really, really good and probably one of the best decision makers. His release is as fast a quicker release that I've seen in college football. He makes phenomenal decisions. When there's a play in one game, he's late and later on he goes down and instead of going out of bounds, he's, he slides, you know, stays in bounds. There's not too many guys that have that presence That's of headsy. mind. Yeah, right. Very, very headsy. In one play has a screen, and he allows the guy comes to the last second, and he's pointing to a guy just slide to your left a little bit and threw the ball under his arm. To I mean, he's just a really, really good quarterback. Scott's got a really good system on defense. They got three interior guys that are 300 plus. We've never faced them. Right. You know, what I mean, the nose and two ends are huge, over 300, and they're all single digits. Right, and I saw three linebackers that are all high. Jasinski and two other linebackers are between them. They have like 70 tackles. Yeah, but when you, definitely, but when you normally have D linemen with single digits, that's not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> when they're all athletic, right, right. They all when they wear number eight, right. Yeah, you'd rather see them in 99 or something <laughs> like that. It's like, but um, they're good players. If we play like last week, we're going to get killed. I mean, I don't have to talk to these guys for eight hours about that. Right. They know that. They know. We better be on point and play our best game. It's like you said, Wags, we have to play our best game to even have a chance. Right. Um, you have played so well at home, the 17 straight wins, which is a very, very impressive figure. Number one, how, how proud do you think these guys are of that streak? Is that something, I know you don't go to a game, we got a winning streak, but they know that they they protect that home field. Well, we don't talk about the streak. We talk about protecting our home turf, our house, and we play well at home. And I think a lot of it is the brigade behind us, the, the crowd, you know, it's a great atmosphere. And we're going to need all of that to beat these guys. We're going to... We're going to have to play great, you know what I mean? We're going to need the 12th man to, mm -hmm. to keep things loud on third down. You know, we need whatever help we can get against these guys because they're really, really good, and we have to play well. And the scary thing about this group is even if we play well, play well, Wags, it still may not be enough. Right, because they're that legit. I mean, but they're... if we don't play well, it's game over, you right. know what I mean? So. You know, we just gotta hopefully be on our best. You know, at Saturday at 3:32. You have beaten a ranked team each of the previous two seasons, Memphis and Houston last year. Do you? Does that give you some? You know, it's clear that when they see a ranked team, they know that they gotta put together a good effort. Uh, they've been able to beat a ranked team now twice in a row. Uh, I've never really done that. You know, I've never really talked about that. Just from the standpoint, never talk about the past. You know, you, know, you just gotta move on. You know, that kind of stuff is nice and stuff, but it has no bearing on this game. It's, right. Totally different team. We're a totally different team. Central Florida is a totally different team. So you just kind of keep pressing forward to the next game, win or lose. Mm -hmm. 
just try to press forward, look at the task at hand, recognizing, like you said, that this is going to be an unbelievable challenge. And hopefully we're up for it. And I mean, I um, was disappointed the way we played last week, but it's a new week, and hopefully we'll bounce back. Real quickly about Milton, uh, I had heard that he was committed here at one point. Is that true, or was it never quite that far, McKenzie? No, he was actually committed to Hawaii. Oh, he was. Okay, he was but did he visit here? He visited here, came right. on a trip. How? I, I mean, he's from Kapolei, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Kapolei. Kapolei, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a nice kid, mm -hmm. you know, wonderful parents. Had you known him for a while, just from being No, a... not, not, I haven't known him for a while. You right. know what I mean? I knew of him, but this I know about the kid just without even, even before I actually got to meet him. He went at a school, Milanani High School, really that hadn't been a football powerhouse, but he won. They won a state championship. I think he won two state championships with them, and with a school that really wasn't, you know, had never won before. So it just shows you this kid's a winner. Right. If he could, and this is what I, this is the background that I know of. If he could live, win at Milanani High School, you know what I mean, you know, with Coach York there, I mean, he, he's a he's a winner. Right. Um, injury report was a little longer than I thought last week. Um, Sullivan uh, and Heflin inside, do you think they'll be able to go on Saturday? Uh, Sullivan probably not. Right. Heflin probably will. Okay. Um, you know, the Lobos? The Lobos probably. Okay. Um, on the offensive side, uh, Brown, one of the Browns is a slot back. Helping Josh. Josh. What do you think? Uh, maybe? maybe probably perhaps? doubtful. Right. And then, of course, Josh Walker? Uh, we're hoping for Temple. Okay, but so, not this week. No. no, so we're really excited, you know what I mean, that he's – you know, because when it first happened, we thought it was a season ender. Right, but it does appear he'll be back. Yeah, yeah. be back, you know, for next time. That's great. Yeah. That's great for him. Um, last but not least, obviously, Zach is on pace to break the shatter the school record for total carries. I, it's Nap McCallum. Um, any concern about uh, wear and tear, or do you feel like he's got the body and the makeup to? No, there's always concern, Legs. You always look at the numbers and your concern. Uh, you know, our quarterbacks over the years have carried the ball a lot. Yeah, Ivan was telling me Ricky Jobs is second all-time with 44 carries. Keenan had 39 in a game. Uh, but you're always concerned they're human. Right. You know, and so, but we play to our strengths. You know, we take, you know, we just stay in the moment. You know what I mean? We allow the media to worry about that stuff. But, I mean, we talk about personnel and all this stuff all the time. But we got to play. It's part of the season. You know, like I said, there's a reason... You know, when some uh, beat reporter from the Capitol asked me why we're not tackling quarterbacks in off season, <laughs> that's why. This is why. You know, he gets I mean? tackled a lot during because, the season. You know, he'll get, and that's why I said he'll get plenty of tackles in the season. We ain't gonna touch him for, you know, eight months. Right, right. And then, then the season we go. You right. know? Well, I was just asking, Coach. Obviously, you're you're carrying the ball a lot. You're over 30 carries a game on, on average. 37 last week. How how do you feel physically? You look you look pretty good. Yeah, I mean I'm fine. I mean, you know our our trainers do a great job. You know every Sunday we have recovery treatments and stuff. So I get in there, you know, ice down, getting the compression boots, and tell them all my bumps, bumps and bruises, and I just work throughout the week and get get my body right. Well, that's why I was laughing. And I ran into your parents at the airport, and I said, "Do you have a whirlpool at home?" And but you probably do a variety of things after a game. I guess on Sunday that's the key is. Recovery, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I've gotten to a routine. Uh, I come in early with uh, our trainer, Jim, and, you know, I just he, I tell him whatever's hurt, and, you know, he just gives me a, a full day's worth of plan. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, focus Sunday, just get my body right, getting recovered, and then throughout the week, you know, I just do what he tells me, and then, you know, I'm ready for Saturday. One thing I would think that is might help, you are a type of person who tends to deliver a blow. Um, in terms of getting hit, is that – help as opposed to where you're getting drilled like I imagine the ones you don't see from behind are the ones but when you're prepared yeah. can you talk about that I mean I, I I wouldn't know but playing college football but is it better when you kind of are the hammer instead of the nail if you will <laughs> yeah I mean I played defense in high school so yeah I know both sides of it and yeah I definitely like carrying the ball more uh yeah just you know delivering the hit I guess you could say um yeah it's definitely I think it's better right not to dwell on it too much, but the turnovers, if you have replayed them in your mind. Um, I know when one play, Daryl kind of ran into you from behind, but you know, talking to Ivan, he felt that if you're holding it high and tight, it doesn't matter where you're being hit. If you're hit from behind, if somebody accidentally runs into you, whatever, when you replay the turnovers, do you feel they were all preventable? Yeah, I mean, I think every turnover is preventable. I mean, it's just self-fault. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this week I just got to focus on, you know, letting that not happen again. Uh, you know, it's something that happened, you know, the second game of the season. Um, 
and I felt like I was I was on an upward trend, and then you know just it happened again this uh, this game. So I, I can't let that happen because you know it's it's definitely game changing kind of stuff. All right. With regard to the pitches, I mean, do you feel comfortable with pitch? A couple of them the, on Saturday looked a little odd. I mean, do you, is that something you just got to rep every day in practice? Yeah. I mean, one was just one was just a timing thing. Right. Um, you know, it's yeah, it's something. You know, we get 100 pitches a day, so you know, it's mind over memory and stuff. But uh, you know, just one that one got away from us, and you know, that uh, the one to Daryl when uh, you know, it was, it was yeah, a little behind. So just timing was off. Um, but you know, that's something we do every day, so it's inexcusable. Right. I'm doing a feature about you. Why don't we go back to the beginning? What led you to the Naval Academy? Uh, initially, I was uh, brought in through football. One of my teammates, I can take for miles. He's been recruited by them, piqued my interest. And then luckily, I got off from them as well. So is Jamal a year younger than you guys? He is, miles? yeah. Right. So it was really miles that it started with. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And so who else was looking at you? I mean, who, 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 where else might you have gone if you hadn't come here? Uh, so I had a um, preferred walk-on offer from Wingate. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a uh, little bit of scholarship from Walford. They don't offer whole scholarships there. And then uh, a couple of D2 and D3 schools. Mm -hmm. What kind of positions did you play in high school? I mean, were you a traditional running back or were you in a wing T? I mean, uh, I played quarterback in high school. Oh, you were a quarterback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so my uh, sophomore and junior year, I played mostly defense. Mm -hmm. uh, I played corner there. And then uh, senior year, I moved to quarterback, which is what I played before. But uh, my senior year is when I got moved back to quarterback. Right. And so when you looked at Navy and running this triple option, and they probably told you slot back's what we see in you. Yeah. I don't think you were recruited as a quarterback. Right. No, no, no. Um, and as I've seen here, a lot of quarterbacks turn out turn out to be A-backs anyway here. Right. So uh, it wasn't a big move for me. Um, I ran a lot in high school. Um, a lot of people always pick on me saying, did I have more passing yards or running, rushing yards? And I'll tell them I have more passing yards, but they don't believe me. But uh, right. it was an easy move. Uh, we get the ball in space out here. Uh, and we make a lot of plays. Well, I was just going to say, so the first two years, you're probably learning the position. I know you didn't play a whole lot your freshman, sophomore. You probably didn't play at all your freshman year, right? right? yeah. Maybe just a little bit as a yeah. sophomore. What What did you have to learn? What did you have to do to become a Navy A back? Um, the whole playbook, pretty much, just the concepts of everything. Uh, repetition, repetition, repetition. Being able to think fast and think on the fly. And not only just like football, X's and O's, but just patience, really. Uh, you had to learn how to be patient, wait your turn. Was there anybody in particular, older guys, that helped you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, DeMond Brown, uh, DeBrandon Sanders. Uh, those two definitely helped me. Uh, Joffrey Whiteside. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I have his number now, so uh, it's always like you, you're pretty close to the person that you have your number with. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gigi Green, he was my coach at Naps. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah that's so, a good one to have. Yeah, um, so I didn't go to school with him, but I had him as a coach at NAP, so that right. was good to have too. So last year when you broke out a little bit, and I know initially early in the season you weren't playing a lot, you weren't getting a whole lot of reps, and then all of a sudden when you got out there you started making big plays and got the, that nickname Big Play Bonner. Uh, how cool was that for you? I mean, was that had to been fun to... Uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was fun being able to be successful as, as an individual, but also as a team. Like, we were winning games too, so uh, that made it even better that we were just winning games as well. Uh, I waited my opportunity, like I said, and uh, I'm glad I was able to make the most of it. So being named captain, I mean, I'm sure when you showed up here from Fayetteville, North Carolina, being the captain of this program was probably the furthest thing from your mind. What's it mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, uh, especially just looking back on where I was plebe year. Uh, you know, you start from the bottom again. Uh, you're really just trying to grind your way back to uh, at least a little bit of relevancy, playing a little bit. And then uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're in a leadership role. And it's amazing because you're leading your friends, your guys, the guys that you're close with, you spend most of the time with. So just being able to do that is a huge honor. Have you been able to pay it back or forward or whatever you want to call, be doing what DeMond Brown and Jeffrey Watts did to you? You helping out Malcolm Perry and some of these other young Oh, yeah, pups? definitely. Uh, definitely been a mentor to uh, the younger guys because we need them as well. I mean, it's just not a whole senior class thing. It's the whole team. Uh, as you've seen, Malcolm Perry plays a big role in our offense. So if he's at his best, then we'll be at our best as well. What might Daryl Bonner do as a officer? Uh, Marine Corps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ground. Yeah, ground definitely. Um, I went to Leatherneck this summer. I liked it. Uh, it was tough, but I mean, they always ask you, "What would you rather be doing at like three o'clock in the morning?" I, I would rather be out in the woods, probably or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a fun experience. So you feel when you look back a long way from Fayetteville, North Carolina? Uh, you come a long way in that yeah, five yeah, years. Yeah, it's been a it's been a long way. Uh, I haven't been home in a while actually, but. Uh, just thinking back on it now, Annapolis, it's kind of been my home now, but I'll never forget Fayetteville. All right. All right, so when uh, Daryl Bonner first showed up, he just told me, and I didn't know this, he was a quarterback in high school. 
Um, so he probably had to learn the A back position from bottom, but uh, that's not new. A lot of guys you got to teach how to play A back. What'd you think? You think he had a player on your hands? Yeah, we did. We all. I mean, uh, when he came from you know from the prep school, they liked him up there. He just always seemed to have a knack for being around the around the ball and being at the right place at the right time. So, you know, we didn't know when he got here um, how good he was going to be. Could he you know perform at this level and do all that? But everything he showed from the time he showed up to you know he just always worked. He was hungry, wanted to learn. Um, he just kept busting his butt, and you know. And then when you bust your butt enough, you get on the field. And we got on the field. He made some plays. So then you obviously stay on the field. So he's done a really good job. For us. Well, you just said it. I was just going to ask you. I mean, last year he was, you know, a little lower on the depth chart. But when some injuries occurred and he got his chance, he was ready and he he performed. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, we, you know, Tony O and Dyson started last year, and we had some guys that played a lot, and he was in the mix. I mean, we play a lot of guys obviously every game, so he had played in every game. And then, you know, obviously the better he performed, um, the more he played, you know, and we had some guys banged up last year, so obviously he had to play a little more. Um, and then, you know, he obviously kept kept playing well, so we had to keep playing. Obviously he showed some things as a junior, but I'm sure he wasn't a finished product. What did you tell Daryl at the end of last season, looking ahead to his senior season, this is what you need to be do to be a complete slot back? Yeah, I, I mean, I, th I thought he, you know, Kind of what's happened. I mean, I, I didn't want him to put too much pressure on himself to think he had to be, you know, everything and be the, you know, that just, that's not his role. His role was, you know, to play hard, be a leader, catch the ball when it's thrown to him, run hard when the ball gets pitched to him. You know, we don't have an offense where we got one guy that's got to be the guy. Um, you know, obviously he had, I, I wanted him to be a better blocker. Right. I, I wanted him to, you know, that. to do, but he, he, uh, you know he's done a, he's done a good job of that he's um, you know he's obviously been banged up the last couple of weeks and and uh, so it was good to get him back you know for the airports game and um, probably played too much against Memphis we had uh, you know some some more guys get get banged up but um, you know this week same thing he's got to play he's got to play hard he's got to play well he's got to block he's got to make some plays for us to, for us to have a chance this week. One of the things about him he is very good in the passing game he's a very good receiver runs good routes catches most everything thrown is that kind of separate him? I mean, not all of your slot backs are great in the passing game. This guy is. Uh, yeah, they, you know, obviously there's some guys like to throw the ball better than others, but um, he has done a good job in the past to catching the ball. Um, like I said, he has a knack for coming down with it when it's thrown. Um, you know, unfortunately this year, you know, he's had a couple of opportunities and, and uh, you know, we didn't make some plays that he made last year. So we just got to get him. He's just got to, I think he might be pressing a little bit, so he just got to get back on track and, you know, Good things are going to happen. He's busting his butt out here. And, you know, I tell those guys all the time, the harder you work, you know, the more good things are going to happen for you. So um, you just got to keep working, you know, and, and we're going to need him to play well, you know, for us to have, you know, the season that we want to have this year. So he just got to keep getting better. Hurdling the defender at Air Force uh, yeah. in the room at the next Monday on tape, I bet there was a lot of hooting and hollering yeah, over there. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that, was a, that was an all-time play around here, especially, you know, against those guys in the situation. Um, you know, his first game back that he he'd really played, and, and uh, you know, it was just a heck of an individual effort. You know, sometimes you know, in big games and big plays like this, you got to have some individual effort. That wasn't coaching. That wasn't anything I told him. That wasn't anything. Just sometimes you got to have guys make plays um, in those situations. You know, and the good teams, the good players will do it. Um, you know, and if it's, if they're waiting on you know a coach to tell them to do this and do that and do this all the time, sometimes you know they're, they're all football players. That's why they do this, why they practice and and play to get in those situations. Sometimes your instincts just got to take over and you got to you got to go do it. And he did it, and <laughs> that'll be on tape for forever. So and there's some pretty cool pictures. But you know now we're on to you know it was on to Memphis now it's Central Florida. So it's just the games just keep getting harder and harder and bigger and bigger. So um, but that's a good thing. You know, especially you know, being here, we play big games here, and it just seems like every week it's it gets keeps getting bigger and bigger, and that's the way it should be. All right, thanks, Dan.